Looks like we have a little bit of a volume. There we go. All right, welcome today. Hey, sorry about yesterday. Uh, like I said in the past couple issues or episodes, we have some new uh, camera webinar toy things that we got. And uh, yeah, so yesterday we had some issues. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Today we're gonna learn how to retip prongs. If you're in the jewelry industry, this is a big money maker. It's something that will save you a lot of time and allow you to make money. Uh, I hear about people that use our machine and all they do is retip prongs. Or sorry, all they do are closed jump rings. And so uh, this is one of the main things we want to teach you off the bat uh, so that you can start utilizing your machine for, for what you got it for. Um, I do want to review what we went over last week, uh, just making sure that the welder is set up properly for any of you that missed that web episode. Just real quick, there were 10 points that we talked about. I was making sure that you're powered up correctly by using a, um, uh, what are those things called again? Yeah, surge protector. Next, making sure your argon was set up correctly. You want to use argon, especially for retipping prongs. Argon is critical. This is one of those things I said last week, you know, if you're not going to use argon, that's okay. You'll just have a lot of cleanup. But when you're retipping prongs, argon is critical um, for getting a good clean weld a good strong weld and for not damaging any stones or anything that's on your ring or, or wherever you're you're tipping the prong. Uh, another thing we talked about was your handpiece and just making sure it's set up correctly. With retipping your prong, same thing. You want to have it at a about a 45 degree angle as we see here. You want to have your electrode sticking out about uh, three to four millimeters or about a quarter of an inch and that's so that you can get good argon coverage. Um, the other thing is you want to be able to focus your scope. So once you, once you can kind of see where your electrode is under, under the scope, you want to have that electrode right kind of in the center of your circle view that you're seeing. And then here's where you adjust that up and down. Today we have this camera view that you're going to be able to see. So you can kind of get an idea of what I'm seeing when I look through the microscope. Um, we'll show a couple welds on that and then we're going to remove that so that I can use both my eyes and, and get a good retipping prong weld. Um, always, always, always have a sharp electrode when you're retipping prongs. Uh, it's very important because we're welding something very small. Um, with a dull electrode or a dirty electrode or a blunt electrode, you're either not going to get the ignition and, and actually light or it's going to come out funky and, and uh, damage your, your prong or the stone that's by the prong. Um, in addition to that, I do want to mention uh, a couple things. Actually, we'll just finish this real fast. Uh, the grounding clip, we recommend that uh, you can do it however you want, but we recommend clipping the ring or whatever you're welding and then holding the wire in your fingertips um, for retipping prongs. Uh, to trigger the weld, also same thing, you can, do a, you can use a foot pedal that came with your welder or you can do the auto uh, where it just triggers by touching um, your workpiece to the electrode. That's how we're going to do it today. Uh, we won't be using the foot pedal. Um, last, we talked about the basic screen. Um, so if we can go to this angle right here. Uh, you'll be able to see um, on the welder. Oh, yeah. Sorry, one other thing. Last week we had a 100C, the new 100C on our show. Today we're using a 150S. So, like I said, um, we're going to use different machines through all of these different episodes. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a, a different machine. If you're using an older machine, if you're using a newer one but a different model, that's okay. The same techniques apply. Um, Chat in, send us an email, call us, whatever you need to do if you need to know recommended settings for your specific machine. Today we're using a 150S, so um, no matter what machine you're using, the, the energy will be uh, basically the same on, on your machine um, or this new machine. Uh, so as we're looking here, we talked about the basic screen. On the 150, the 100C last week, the basic screen is always up. On the 150S, this one, you can choose to use the basic screen. So we're going to start with a silver uh, prong today. So I'm going to choose silver, and then I'm going to go to the prong retipping 
method right there. And it comes up with the recommended settings that it wants me to use. And I'm actually going to, eh, that's, good. that's a good starting point. I actually like to be around 9 uh, with the, the 9 watt seconds of power with the ring we're using today. But we'll start here just so you can kind of see. Um, and then the last thing I said, as always, when you come to your machine, hit the reset button when you're starting a new project. Because we all know there's gremlins in your buildings that go and mess with your settings. And then you go to weld something and it blows up. So, again, hit that reset button and, uh, and that will put your system back at factory default settings. Then you can start your process and, and get welding. Uh, so let's get started. Um, as I mentioned, the setup is, is most important. Uh, you want to make sure everything, like I mentioned, is, is in the right place. Uh, when retipping a prong, you are going to have, you have this really small wire, and you have, you know, today we're doing a ring, right? So if, I have, if I'm holding the wire way out here, and you know I'm holding the ring right here. It's going to be really hard to hold that steady. Um, uh, partially, I'm nervous right now because I'm live on TV, YouTube, same thing. Uh, or for some people, they like to drink Red Bull or coffee in the morning. You get shaky, right? Guess what? The energy that's coming out of here, yes, it's enough to melt metal, but it's so concentrated into that little area. Uh, that you really can have your fingers close and and you're not going to have to worry about getting burnt or shocked or anything like that. As long as you keep the power low where we recommend. If you accidentally have the power up high, yes, you're going to burn yourself and it doesn't feel pleasant, but it also it won't kill you. So we all have to experience it at least once. I have some good uh, lines in my fingers from accidentally trying to weld a, a wire at 100 watt seconds and well now I just have a memory of that one time I made a dumb mistake. Maybe if we meet one day in the future, I'll show you. But next, you want to hold steady. You want to have your fingers close. Uh, a key thing that I think we talked about last week, uh, use the table or wherever you have your welder to rest your hands. So as I talked about with the wire being like this and your ring being like this, you're all shaky. Well, if your hands are not supported on anything, you're going to be really shaky also. So. Fingers close, rest your wrists on a table, and that's going to help you be even more steady. Another thing we talked about last week, position underneath, you know, before you look through the microscope, position close to where you need to be, then look through the microscope, and then all you have to do is just kind of lift your fingers up, and, uh, and then you'll be able to make that weld. Um, so, retipping prongs. What type of wire should we use? Uh, before I go any further, Thane, have I missed anything? Nope. Okay. Okay. What type of wire should you use? Okay. You have 30 gauge wire, 28 gauge wire, 26 gauge wire, 20 gauge wire. Uh, really, once you learn how to do this, it's going to be down, it's going to come down to preference. We like to use 28 gauge wire because when you're retipping a prong, you just want to add a little bit at a time. You don't want to add a lot of metal. Uh, adding a lot of metal at one time, one, requires a lot of heat, so it's a it's, uh, uh, chance of damaging the stone that's there on the ring or whatever. Um, another thing is splatter, right? If you're using too big of a wire, you have to use more power. You might get some of that wire on it. Um, so yeah, we recommend uh, starting with a 28 gauge wire. Now, if you need that wire to be thicker, what you can do um, let's cut to this camera. Can you see that wire okay? Lift up a little bit closer. Like this? There you go. So what you can do is you can take 28 gauge wire, you can take two strands and twist them together. And what that'll do is it'll give you a thicker piece of wire on one end if you need to add uh, more metal. This I would recommend more for if you're filling porosity or a hole or whatever. For retipping a prong, use your other side where you have two pieces coming off. You can just pick whichever piece you want, but that's that's what we'll do. Is this is this is a tip or a trick that that we use just to help save time and what and whatnot. So you'll use the one piece of end of the wire that's going to go on the prong. Now another thing uh, 
to do is, um, sorry, I'm just reading some notes here. Um, once you're actually getting started, another thing to keep in mind and, and make sure you're doing is the method of, of how you add the wire. So uh, what, I what I want to do here, uh, what camera do we have on right now? Let's come back to this one. Okay. So a couple things I want to talk about here. First, uh, where you position everything, right? Um, when you weld something, uh, when you're adding wire, what happens is you know you, you touch the electrode to, let's say this is the prong right here, my index finger is the prong. Um, and then as I bring the wire in, I'm actually going to physically touch the wire to the prong. Now, two things to remember. If I touch the wire with my electrode when I'm coming down, it's just going to ball up the wire. Um, and then it's going to stick to your electrode and, and kind of make a mess. If you touch the electrode to the prong right in front of the wire, what's going to happen is it's going to pull that metal. It's actually going to suck it towards the, the electrode. Right? And that's how we melt the, the metal on top of that prong. Uh, so remember that. It's a really important thing because if you just keep touching the wire, it's either going to ball up the wire or it's going to make a mess of your electrode or you're going to have to clean your electrode a lot. You're still probably sometimes going to touch the wire, but you need to be touching the, the prong first. Um, now another thing with that is that then, uh, like I said, it pulls the metal to where you're going. Um, another thing is, is where you come in with the wire. Okay, So we're going to come in over the diamond or stone or whatever, because if, if we're doing this outside prong right here, we're going to come over like this, we're going to touch that prong and suck that metal onto it. Um, so you'll see a better view of that once we get in here close. Before I go on, do we have any questions uh, that have come through the feed yet? None coming through. Okay, if anyone has any questions, make sure to chat them in on YouTube. There's the live chat thing there so we can answer your questions. Also remember, this is going to be on YouTube when we're done. It's going to automatically post. You can come and rewatch it. And we'll make a page on our website to go through some of these things we're talking about. Um, okay. So just the type of material? Oh yeah, different types of material. So uh, obviously if you have a silver ring, use silver wire. If you're doing a gold ring, you get gold wire. You can buy uh, all the different gauge wires from any of your suppliers. You can get it through us. Um, you can get it from Rio, Stoller, uh, we're friends with all of them, so we're not scared to throw our names. Auto Fry, it doesn't matter. a and uh, You can order wire through them uh, and any type of metal. So just remember that. You don't want to use solder. You're actually using silver wire. Um, another thing, if you have a lot of scrap metal, a lot of people will um, roll out or draw out and make their own wire. That's totally fine. Um, like I mentioned, we like to use thinner wire. It's always easier to add more. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult if you add a big piece of metal and then you have to draw it away. The whole purpose of retipping a prong with an Orion pulse arc welder is to not have to remove the stones. And so, really, with these this method, pulse arc welding, you're saving a lot of time because with soldering you'd have to remove the stone. With laser, it's also a very good machine. We sell lasers, we love lasers, but you always have that fear of you know, accidentally moving, having the laser beam hit the stone, and then you're done. The nice thing about an Orion, uh, if you touch the stone, it's not going to weld. It's only going to weld if it touches metal. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, let's see here. Am I missing anything? Let's start welding. What do you guys say? Any questions come through yet? What's that? The phone. Oh yeah, so we got to get the phone. Actually, let's set up the welder first. So, um, we're doing a silver ring first. I also have some gold. We'll do a, an example with gold. Uh, your energy setting, uh, if you're using a different model than the 150S that we have on display here, is going to be between 7 and 10 watt seconds, depending. Our recommendation, we're giving you tips and tricks, always start lower. Uh, start around five or six, do a weld. If it doesn't, 
ignite or it doesn't melt the metal, then slowly move up. Um, with the newer systems, we have recommended settings, right? So here on the 150S, the newer Ryan 150S, you have the basic screen. Um, and what you do is you come in, select silver. Oh, there we go. Joint type, prong retipping right here. And it's not recognizing the warmth from my fingers because I'm freezing cold right now. So that's why it wasn't responding. It's been cold here in Utah and our building's cold and yes, I'm ranting. So anyways, okay, so it recommends to be at 8 watt seconds when you start out. And you know what, I'm going to stay there just so you can see if you have this machine. And if not, start at 8 watt seconds with the welder that you have. Um, and you know, make sure you hit play. So, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show here through my phone uh, that's hooked up to the microscope. Need the plugs? Oh, sorry, I'm not plugged in. Uh, let me go here. There we go. I don't know what camera's on, so maybe you're seeing back of my body right now. I don't know where we're at. Do we have that pulled up there, Thane? We're working on it. Okay. Let's do this view right here then while you're pulling that up. There we go. Okay. So everybody, as you can see here, we have a little bit uh, closer view from what I was explaining earlier. But if I were re-tipping this prong right down here, which as you can see has been built up. Again, what we're showing you today, try to find try to find some uh, used pieces, some some junk metal uh, that wire across uh, across the stone to get that um, prong right there. And what I'm doing is I'm actually touching the wire to the prong, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up and touch my electrode, and I'm going to touch the prong, but as close to the wire as possible. And what it's going to do is going to kind of suck that metal into that spot. So let me see if I can do one real quick, just using one eye through the through the microscope here. I think I can do it. It's kind of hard to see, but whatever. There we go. So as you can see, it's stuck to the metal, and that's perfect. There's a couple options of what you can do from here. You can weld again on top of it to kind of break that wire away and melt the metal on, or you can wiggle it, wiggle it free and, and it'll do the same thing. I'm going to use the welder to melt that. And there we go. There we go. So we've melted more on there and then I can kind of do a pull away this time as I hit. Now, I left a little piece there, which is fine. We can just weld it and it'll it'll continue to ball up. There you go, as you can see right there. So don't be alarmed if, if you get a weird piece like I just had right there. Now, I'm finding that the 8 watt seconds isn't doing what I want it to. So I'm going to move my power up a little bit because I want a little bit more melting to happen. So I'm going to go up to about 9.8 and just weld right on top of that. And you can see it smoothed that out. So as you weld around, you kind of have a little ice cream scoop bubble right on top. You can weld around that, push that metal down, and uh, and do that. But as you can see, our stone's fine. We didn't melt anything. We didn't get anything dark and dirty. Um, when you're done, you know you have the wire brush. I don't know what camera's on right now. Are we still on the the one over there? So important thing here with these fiberglass brushes we send out, you don't want to have them too far extended because these these fibers will just break off. So just leave about a millimeter sticking out, uh, as you can see in the picture here, and then you can clean up the area. Oops, I don't need to have that clipped. That's fine. You can clean up the area where you welded, and it just gets the black off the off the metal. So there you have it. Um, we retipped the prong. We can also, you know, go in there and clean it up a little bit more. This was just an example. We're going to do some more. Don't worry. Uh, as you can tell, this has been used for many examples. Uh, is the phone one working? 
Yeah, if you want to turn it sideways, it'd be a better, uh, little better view for us. A little better view? All right. There we go. Let me zoom in here. Hey, Bryce. Oh, yeah, we have a guest today. Bryce, can you come here for a sec? He's going to show his way of retipping prompts here in just a second. Can you just hold the phone like that? Thanks, buddy. All right. There we go. Okay. So, this is kind of what you're seeing when you look through the microscope. And what I just did was this. So, I set up. My hands are rested on the table. Um, will you touch right there on top of the prong on the, from the screen? It'll help focus. So we had a question. What if, we, what if they want to use a 14 karat white gold to tip on a sterling prong? What if you want to use a 14 karat gold wire? Gold wire on a sil sterling silver prong. On a sterling silver prong. Okay. What do you guys say? It's gonna di it's gonna make the color look different. So, like I said in the beginning, we recommend using the metal the same metal prong, or sorry, the same metal wire as what you're welding. All right. So, yeah, you could do that. It's fine. Uh, with pulse arc welding machines, you can mix metals. That's no problem at all. It's just, it's going to change the color. Um, it's, it, it's not going to look right. It, you know, you want to do a good job. You want to give your customers, uh, you know, if they have a gold ring, you're using gold wire. If they have a silver ring, you're using silver wire. Um, so, yeah, that's what we recommend. Anything to add was, to that? Uh, how do we protect fragile stones? Okay. Oh, I totally forgot. Very important. Um, I'm going to step off yeah, the step, uh, Thank you, Bryce. Okay. When you're first starting out uh, and you're learning how to do this, there's, there are many things out there that you can use to, to help protect the stone. Um, we, we use something called GemGuard. Uh, it's on our website. If you're interested, you mix these two compounds together. It turns into a paste. You put it over the stone and it protects the stone from heat, uh, from splatter, um, you know, so that's a good thing. Cool Jewel, something that uh, some of the companies out there sell. Uh, uh, what are some of the other ones? Toothpaste. Oh, okay. Then there's, then there's the really inexpensive ways, which work just fine also. You can use toothpaste, you can use chapstick, uh, it doesn't matter. Just something you know, any one of those four compounds will be fine to just put over the stone um, and protect it from... The main thing you, you, you're protecting from are, are like uh, pieces of metal flying off from the wire or, or sparks and stuff. So that's the key thing. If you blast that electrode with... Or sorry, if you blast that prong with 100 watt seconds of power, um, no paste or anything is going to protect the stone. That thing's going to heat up, and, and unfortunately, that's one of the, the disasters that can happen. So keep your energy low, keep your power low. Um, when we say energy and power, it's the same thing, just so no one gets confused. Uh, keep, keep the watt seconds uh, low, you know, between 5 and 10, and that'll be fine. But the paste comes in handy for, you know, sparks and splatter from from the wire coming off. So, really good questions, really, really good questions. We have size the size of wire. Oh, okay, sizing of the wire. This here example that we have is 28 gauge wire. This is typically what we use when we're showing demonstrations, when we're doing trainings, workshops, all that. You can weave the 28 gauge wire together to make it bigger. That's good for filling porosity, holes, other things like that. Um, 26 to 30 is our recommendation. Uh, 26 gauge wire is, is still big for prongs. But we've seen people do that where they'll weld it on top. And Bryce is going to show an example of, of where a thicker piece of wire comes in handy. Um, and, and that's an option of what you can do. But again, we recommend 28, 30 gauge wire. That way you can add little bits at a time. Because um, if you add, you can always add more. But if you do too, too big of a wire, um, you're going to have to, one, use more power, or you're just not going to get a good result because uh, you got to keep that power low to protect the stone. 
Anything else I need to touch on that, guys? No, just re-emphasizing on the white gold. It is possible. Yes. You can do it. It just may look funny. Yep. It is possible. You can use white gold on silver. It just might look <laughs> funny, like Thane said. So uh, that's not a problem. Bryce, would you have something? If I can add to that, while it will work, you will get different results. Um, the cool thing about the pulse arc, you can mix different metals together as you're welding. Not all metals bond together wonderfully. Um, so when you're welding prong work or delicate work, it really is best to stick with the parent material. If you're doing silver ring, stick with silver wire if at all possible. Use something like white gold as an, an absolute last resort. Um, it will work, but you will always get better results if you stick with the parent material. Cool. All right. So there you have it. If you have any other questions on that, let us know. <coughs> Chime in if that didn't make sense or uh, anything like that. So, uh, so from here, I'm actually going to have Bryce come up and show his method. Um, Bryce is our sample specialist. So if anyone ever wants to send samples here to, to our company, Sunstone and Orion Welders, um, Bryce is the one that will take your material. He'll find the best settings, weld it together, everything like that. So. He has a good background in this and uh, um, just another way to show you of what you can do for retipping prongs. So, Bryce, take over, buddy. Thank you, sir. If I can just say, do you want this on or do you want this off? Uh, oh, whoops. So this is how everyone knows, you now know Scotty P's personal <laughs> I would like to personally thank Scotty P and Orion Welders for inviting me on their show today. Um, Scott, I gotta tell you, I have always been a fan of all of your work that I've seen you in. So, <laughs> thank being, a, you. being a part of Wednesday Welding with Scotty P's on Thursdays <laughs> is an absolute pleasure. We so, love having you, Bryce. So, are we ready for me to get going? Is that in focus? A little bit further back? Hey guys, what I'm going to go ahead and do here for you, I do things a little bit differently than Scotty P. So Thane, if you wouldn't mind switching over to the screen over here. Now Scotty P started off in our basic tab. Basic tab works great. I'm kind of a traditionalist, so I like the arc tab. So if I come back here, I'm going to go into arc. A cool little feature on this, you also can just swipe. So if I swipe my screen, it goes from basic where I can swipe it. Now I'm back in arc. Kind of a cool feature. I like, I like the arc screen. My settings I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start at 9 watt seconds. Full length, no agitation, um, standard ignition. These for me are great settings and I, that's what I like using. Now I have an older ring here that I'm going to use as well. And unlike Scotty P, I like using 26 gauge wire. But I'm a weirdo like that. I also use different angles. So this is just to show you, you can use any angle you like to use. If you like to come over on top of it, that will give you good results. I'm more of a, a dead-on kind of a guy. So I'll go straight over just like this. And uh, our camera setup guys, ready to go? Are you ready? Okay. So I like to come straight over on top. As I look through my microscope, and I touch that prong right there. Is it too hard? Do you want to have the full microscope? If that'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let us cut to a different angle here. We've got our little shuffle going on. We got the other angle? Okay. There you go. Thank you, Scotty P. You're welcome. Welding Wednesdays with Scotty P on Thursday has been my favorite show for at least a week. All right, so if we're in view here, I'm gonna put my 26 gauge wire straight on top of my prong, and then I'm gonna go touch my prong. And look at that. That welded that wire right on there just perfectly, right where I want it to be. Now, what I'm gonna do with this one, I have a pair of uh, wire cutters here, or dikes, and I'm actually gonna cut the wire just a little bit. And then now you can see in that camera view, I have a little, extra wire, a little pokey that I left on top of there. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn up my energy to about 12 watt seconds. Okay. 
Okay, there's 12. I'm going to touch the tip of that extra wire left on there directly on the electrode. And that shot it down into a nice ball right on top of that prong. And I'll touch on the side of it, smooth it over a little bit more. Just nice and easy. Go around the edge a little bit. Now you can see I've built up that prong quite a bit already with that extra wire. I can add more wire if I wanted to, or I can leave it just as it is. I'm going to take this nice wire brush and clean it off right there. Next what I would do as a jeweler, well I have that metal on there and that's nice. It doesn't look finished, so I'd come over on top of this with a small file or, or a flex wheel or something, and I would smooth that down, bend it over on top, get the angles I wanted, get the grooves I wanted, and clean it up. Um, doing a little extra finish work with the file really will make a big difference. While this looks good right here, um, you could always make it a little bit better. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to take it over to my steamer and just nice clean it over with some steam. This little black that you see on the stone right here and underneath, uh, all that is is a little bit of soot and that comes right off with a little bit of steam. So no worries there whatsoever. So you saw there in about 30 seconds with a total of five welds, I added wire, cut it off, and then I was able to smooth it over uh, very quickly and very easily all the way around that prong. So like Scotty P said, adding, prongs, adding wire to prongs is super simple. What I'm going to do now, we have some smaller prongs here on the side, smaller stones. I'm going to show you a little bit of different weld on this one right here. First I'm going to move my energy down, being this is a smaller prong. I'm going to go down to about 5 watt seconds. So that's quite a big change. And then I'm going to use this 30 gauge wire. Just to give you an idea, I can use anywhere from 26 to 30 gauge with no problem. Um, it really comes down to the prong you're using and the te technique you like to use. So if I'm using a smaller gauge wire on a smaller prong, I like to do the, about the same method. What's going to happen here is I touch it and weld. The wire actually didn't attach to the prong but the metal from the wire got sucked down onto the prong and added itself to it. And I hope my fingers aren't in your way. If you can't tell, I get a New York pedicure at least weekly. <laughs> a trick I learned from Scotty P. Hey Bryce, we have a question. Yeah. Okay. If you need to bend a prong over a stone after a weld, how do you deal with the hard, brittle weld joint? You know, there's a few methods, uh, but typically the best way to go about it, uh, you can see here I've got this prong built up quite a bit. And there's a little bit of soot there wiping that off. Easy peasy. Now I can come over with, uh, with the electrode, and if I, depending on where I touch on the prong, I will actually pull metal. So if I touch more on the inside here, it's going to pull the metal this way, just from the heat. So you can actually use the electrode to push the metal around a little bit. And play around with the angles. Come at it at right angles, come at it directly on it, and that will help pull the metal different directions. As far as using a file or some other tool to bend the prong over on top of it, you are right, that can cause a little bit of brittleness. Um, so what I'll typically do, I'll bend it over on top. Then I'll turn down my energy fairly low. Um, back down to maybe five or even less than that and just do one small weld here on the side of the prong just to realign everything and what the trick is you want to use low enough energy so that you you melt right where you touch but not high enough that it actually melts the prong and deforms it um, and that will help um, with your with your brittleness issue after you bend it over thanks Bryce anyway so that's two examples showing a 30 gauge wire for these smaller prongs at only 5 watt seconds or using a 26 gauge wire on something larger and I was going anywhere from 9 to 12 watt seconds. I've, I've honestly gone up as high as 15 watt seconds on some larger prongs and I've done some really small pave or micro pave at you know 3 watt seconds or on the, on the 200 I2 as low as 1 watt second. Uh, what's really cool with these machines and it doesn't matter with the 100C, the 150S or the 200 I2. 
um, in classic mode, you can use the same settings on all of them and it's going to be dang near close. But you can get down and do really fine, intricate work. When you're working on micro pave or really, really small prongs, I don't know if Scotty told you this already, there's a different type of electrode that Orion offers. This is a one millimeter in diameter. They have a half mil in diameter electrode. The half mil in diameter is a lot smaller and will focus the energy better. So when you're working on small pave, uh, switch it over to that half millimeter electrode that should come with the machine and then use really low energy, about one watt second or less, and just, just work around that. And then with that smaller stuff, you can even get down to 32, 36 gauge wire. So those are a few of my, my tips and tricks that I like to use. Uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily a trained jeweler, but what's really cool about using the Orion welder, you don't have to go to school for years and years to learn all the tricks of the trade. Uh, you're able to weld any material, able to do any kind of bonding or forming with this machine with relatively low practice. Like Scotty P said, always practice first on some scrap materials. And boy, I'll tell you what, when I first started, I was really using that gem guard quite a bit. Um, I don't hardly ever use it now unless I'm holding next to a pearl or an opal, something really soft. Um, but when I first started, I was on using it with pretty much everything. So, big recommendation there, and I'm sure that will give you great results. Scotty P, Mr. Thane Bear, are there any further questions I can help you out with on this, on this application? Uh, does anybody else have any questions for Bryce while we have him here? If so, um, do you mind staying in here and maybe answering questions on YouTube for a second? My pleasure. All right. Always happy to help. Thanks, buddy. Hey, Scotty P. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you and meeting you in person. Yeah. <laughs> it has been. Oh, Bryce. Always keeping us on our toes. Um, Bryce and I have actually known each other for a long time. So He's just being funny. Only professional, <laughs> but on a personal level, I mean, it's... You know what? I'm going to pause for a second. I like to ski in the mountains. My brother-in-law always tells me when I ask him questions on, on what to do, he says, just smile. Same thing with welding. You know what? Make sure you're having fun. These machines are way cool. They help you, and uh, always smile and have fun. And don't worry. If you have questions, let us know. Tell your friends, too. If the, any of your friends have machines, uh, welding, pulse arc welding machines, Send your questions, and there's never a reason to get down because we always have an answer for you guys. All right, so uh, just a last couple things. Chime in, ask some questions if you have any more because uh, we're going to be done here in just a couple minutes. Um, I just want to touch on a couple things here before we end um, about some of our tips and tricks for these different methods. Um, so the first one... Uh, I mentioned earlier, touch the workpiece, not the wire. You're going to have the wire close, but make sure you touch the workpiece. Um, keep your fingers tight and in place. Um, so you don't want to move around like I showed you earlier. Have your fingers tight and in place. Rest your hands on the table. Um, if you move or pull away, uh, one, it's either not going to weld, or if, if you move too late, it's going to make the arc go somewhere where you don't want it to go. So don't be scared. You've made sure on the screen that the energy is where you set it. Have your fingers close, touch, weld, and you'll be good. You saw in the video of Bryce with that really, with that close up video, um, you know, he had his fingers really close and everything was fine. Uh, you can use the welder to cut your wire. So if you don't have uh, cutters or, um, you know, you can, like I showed you, you can touch the electrode up the wire a little bit and pull, and it'll it'll break the wire for you, especially on 30-gauge wire and 28-gauge wire. That'll break really easy. On 26 and lower, you probably have to cut it with some cutters. Um, uh, say, let's see. Oh, yeah. The reason for the using the electrode to cut the wire is it just saves time. You don't have to pull your eyes away from the microscope. You can just cut and then keep welding. So that's, that's, that's what we want to help you do. We want to help you guys save time, but also be, you know, uh, save time and be efficient, but also be, um, uh, be able to do jobs on the spot for people, you know. Um, 
uh, but we also want you to, to be good at it. You know, we don't want you to be sloppy, and uh, this takes time, takes practice. Uh, but really, if you just sit down and, and weld for an hour or so, you're going to get comfortable at this to where you can do it in any occasion. So, um, when we say, you know, when we say it takes time, that's what we mean. Just an hour or two on the welder getting used to it, getting used to looking through the microscope, where to position the electrode, and that's what we're hoping that we're, we're helping you with. Um, and then add material slowly, as we, we mentioned. You don't want to add big globs of metal. It, it just causes more cleanup and, and sometimes a lot more headache. But if you add just a little bit at a time, then you can slowly know where you need to add more metal or um, uh, you know, get the right, the right height of the, the, or the prong. So. Okay, so... I had a question on what size electrode lead we're using. Oh, okay. That's a very good question. Um, thank you for, for bringing that in. Uh, I mentioned this in last week's episode. When you get an Orion welder, it comes with five half millimeter electrode, um, half millimeter diameter electrodes, and then uh, five one millimeter diameter electrodes. Everything we've been doing today has been with the one millimeter electrodes. Uh, the truth is, another trick tip, 99% of the time, I always use the one millimeter electrode. You can sharpen it. You can, you can sharpen it uh, really sharp to where it, you know, in essence, kind of has the same effect as a half millimeter electrode. But the reason why we provide those half millimeter electrodes is a lot of people out there are working with tin or uh, real delicate antiques, hollow wear, things like that. And you know, you have, especially on the 200i2, where you can bring that welder down, uh, your weld energy down to you know 0 0.02 or whatever. Uh, that's where you really need that half millimeter electrode. Um, Retipping a prong, unless it's a tiny prong like micro pave, um, you're probably going to use. Uh, the one millimeter electrode. Uh, when you're practicing and trying different things, try both, see what you like, but uh, we here at Orion 99% of the time are using a one millimeter electrode and if we need it to really be super sharp we just sharpen it up extra sharp and it gives that same effect. So, Good question, great question. Um, we had a question on the difference between triangle and square mode. Okay, yeah. We're actually going to do an episode that goes deep into uh, those different waveforms on the 200i2. Uh, anyone out there that's listening right now, this is a question regarding the Orion 200i2 um, series welder. Uh, it has different waveforms uh, built into that system. You have the classic uh, uh, sloped waveform, you have a triangle waveform, and you have a square waveform. Um, the best kind of most simple description that I can give right now is with triangle form you're getting a little bit more of a punch, you're getting a little bit uh, stronger power, initial power whereas with the square, was it between triangle and square? Yeah, the square you're getting a little bit smoother of a weld, you know your, your power's initiating and then it's holding that for a while so it holds that power out longer it's going to give a little bit smoother uh, weld it's not going to be as powerful, it's going to be more on the surface uh, whereas that triangle is able to kind of hit, hit the metal and, and melt it and get the penetration. So um, again, we'll go further into that in, a, in another episode, but Bryce has an additional thing he wants to add in there. Yeah, right here on the question, they specifically mention using square and triangle with silver. Um, something you're going to see, triangle and square add a lot more heat than classic does. And square actually adds the most heat of anything else because you're using full power for the full length of the well before it cuts off. So with all that extra heat going into the piece, you're going to see a few things. One, you are going to see the, the workpiece heat up significantly more, especially with silver. But it is very helpful because with all that extra heat, it's going to help the silver flow a little bit more and a little bit better. So it's great for larger welds um, to really smooth it out, help you get a nice, good, cleaner finish. Whereas, like you said before, Scotty, Triangle and even classic will punch a little bit more. Uh, it will create a, maybe a little bit more depth in the well, a little bit less heat, a little bit more of a kick. Uh, and that square will help that silver flow a little bit more if it's needed. Thank you, Bryce. That was a very good, 
uh, explanation. Something he said that really stood out to me is um, the heat. It, it really will, with that square mode, it'll heat up the piece. Even if it doesn't seem like it's welding or doing a lot, it's going to heat your piece up a lot because um, it's holding that power for the, the whole length of, of time of the weld. So, did we have any other questions? Again, we're, we're going to go into waveforms uh, with more uh, diagrams and explanations and when to use what. So, Right now, if you do have the basic screen installed on your 200i2, uh, do, do, you know, start with what we recommend, like when you're retipping a prong. But then it's very good it's, uh, to try you know, the different waveform modes and just to kind of see the different uh, reactions that you get. It's good gold. All right, so uh, I'm going to do an example on gold. And just so you can see the difference between gold and silver, uh, you can see we're not playing games. You can do this on any metal. Um, so uh, let's do that. Okay, what are we on this camera right here? Yep. Okay, cool. So we have a little uh, gold piece here. Has a, an opal in the middle, um, and it, you know, as you know, this is one of the most delicate uh, types of. Um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Heat sensitive. Heat sensitive stuff on stone. So I mean, what is that the word? So I don't know why, it just seems weird in my head. Probably because we're live. Uh, so anyways, uh, as you can see here, first off I'm going to do, I'm going to do a reset because Bryce was using my machine and who knows if he's going to play a trick on me. Uh, I'm going to go to the basic screen. I'm going to choose gold, yellow gold, and prong. And again, it starts us at 8 watt seconds, which is a good spot. This is a smaller piece of metal. I have a smaller... Uh, smaller gauge wire, um, so this is this is a good a good starting point. Um, I probably should clean my electrode, but Bryce is so good that there's no uh, no debris on it, so I think we're okay. And as you can see, I brought the the wire over the opal, and I hit on the outside of the prong with the wire on the inside, and it sucked that metal towards the electrode. So, now I can break that off, do it again. And we can build that up. Do we have a good view, guys? Looks great. All right, cool. And you can see that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and you can keep building up. Um, we have a little, little funky piece sitting right there. If you're too nervous of uh, hurting the stone, you can buff that out, um, or if you think everything's going to be okay, or you have your, you know, toothpaste or chapstick or cool jewel or whatever there, then you're you're okay to just weld on top of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just hit right here on the side, see if I can't pull that in, which worked perfectly. So I'm going to clean that up and. We are good to go. Let me show, uh, actually we don't have that hooked up. Yeah, that's all right. We'll leave it at that. Um, Just go ahead and polish the black between the stone. Yeah, on that same one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just with the with the brush? Yep. Okay. Then bring it to the electrode. Can you see that? Oh, am I blocking it? Perfect. All right, there you go. Now, one thing that we did want to talk about that I that I skipped over: uh, cleaning up after you polish or after you weld. There's a couple different methods. Many of you are jewelers; you know what you're doing. Uh, we like to use. Did we change camera angles? Okay. Uh, we like to use these discs that you can put on your flex shaft. You can put it on a, a Dremel tool. Um, whatever you need. So these also you can get from any jewelry dealer. Uh, Thane, real quick, what are, what's the name for these? The specific Silicone name? buffing wheels. Okay, silicone buffing wheels. So these right here, these are great for cleaning up the area. Um, 
like I said, time is money, right? So when you're doing your repairs, have these ready, do your repair, polish it up, boom. Person's in and out in 10 minutes and, and they're happy, they have their ring, they have whatever they need. Uh, but we use these silicone polishing wheels um, and they'll clean up just about anything. Um, other, other applications out there, um, you know, where you had to weld a lot, you might have to use more um, of a buffing wheel or whatever, but these, these will typically get the job done. So we recommend using those. Having these always ready, whether it's on a Dremel or on your flex shaft. Um, they have different grades of them and, you know, some are more uh, coarse. coarse. I was going to say porous. Some are more coarse. So, you know, they'll take away more metal, whereas others will just polish. So that's a really good um, tool to have uh, at all times. So um, I guess in conclusion, uh, you know, we went over those key things to remember. Um, uh, is there anything I missed? Should I just go over these? Okay, cool. Good base for your hands. Like I've said multiple times, repetition is key. So you remember. Uh, getting the right wire is vital to success. Um, like your question earlier, you can use the, the mixed wires, it's okay. Pulse arc welders weld dissimilar metals beautifully. Um, but, is it just this one? Okay, cool. So, uh, always have a sharp, clean electrode. Uh, you're going to see in other episodes that you don't want a sharp electrode with certain applications. Retipping prongs, always have a sharp, clean electrode. If you're switching metals, clean the electrode. One tip I want to show you guys. Last week I showed you on the, the stylus, you have the little groove here, and that helps you measure where your electrode's supposed to be. So if you don't have that, if you have an older model, cut a groove in this thing so you know where to go. Here's another thing. Have your electrodes uh, sharpened both sides. Okay, sharpen both sides of your electrodes and just keep them in this bad boy. That way you're always ready to go, you know? When, you, when you're changing a metal, when you're changing an application, pull out the old electrode, slip this one in, and then you just clean them all, or you sharpen them all at the beginning of the day, you know, when you, you're starting your welding. So another trick or tip there for you. Like I said, that's what we want to do is help you guys be more efficient. Let's pull, the, pull, the, pull it off and show that back camera. Oh, right here? The, the groove. Oh, the groove, okay. So, on the newer systems, you have a groove cut into your stylus hole here. And when you're measuring your electrode to make sure it's out the correct distance, you just want to make sure it's within this area right here where the groove is cut into your stylus hole. Um, if you have an older model, you're not going to have this groove. So, once you find the perfect length, just scratch, scratch a groove into your uh, hole here, and then that way you know um, exactly where to put that electrode. And then, are you still on that camera? No? Okay, back here. All right, so, sorry, I got off track. Let's go back to uh, our key points to remember, key thoughts to take away from this episode. Um, I've taken a lot of your time, so I appreciate you being here with us. Uh, protect the stones, okay? Whether it's with gem guard or cool jewel or toothpaste or uh, you know, Burt's beeswax, lip chap, chapstick, whatever, you know? Uh, protect that stone, especially when you're starting out. As you heard, Bryce, he did the same thing when he was starting out. He used it all the time. So, um, touch the workpiece, not the wire. That's a key one for retipping prongs. Um, add the material in small bits, not all at once, uh, and then clean and polish to your desire. Uh, you can get really intricate with that, or you know, you can do it quickly, or however you want to do that. But again, use those those discs that we were talking about, and uh, you have all of your cleaning solutions. The nice thing here, again, saving time, no acid bath, no pickling. Uh, you basically do the weld, clean up the area, and you're done. So that's really cool. Um, you can use brushes, steamers, ultrasonic cleaners when you're all done just to get everything looking shiny and that'll help remove uh, any blackness that you couldn't get off with uh, the fiberglass brush. Uh, and then just remember, it's okay if the prong breaks. 
All right, you can re-weld it. Uh, like Bryce was saying, if you have to bend the prong, it might get brittle on that outside end. Lower the energy and hit it. Uh, you know, touch the electrode where that brittle spot is. It'll help fuse the metal back together. Um, that's not a problem at all. So uh, this is a learning process. Um, you know, it, it, the more you do it, the better you're going to be at it, and the, the better you'll feel doing it. Again, don't hesitate to send us emails, call us, chat in. Um, we have live chat from 9 to 5 Mountain Standard Time, you know, Monday through Friday. If you have questions, let us know. Uh, we don't want you to get a welder and then put it on the shelf because you're scared to use it. So that's the purpose of, of these shows. We want to help you out. Um, we, and have a, we have a question. Uh, what is the warranty on a new machine? Okay. Is there a trade-up option and do you sell used machines? Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Two-year warranty on, oh, sorry, three-year warranty on all Orion Pulsar welders. Um, so from the day you get it, three years, we got your back. Uh, after the three years, if something happens, that's okay. Give us a call. We're going to fix it for cost, all right? We're not going to charge you a hand and a leg just because you had to send your welder in to, to have something fixed. Um, so just remember that, you know. Uh, second question. Trade-up option. Trade-up option, yes. So we don't have this on our website uh, or anything, but we do offer a trade-up option. So if you have an older machine and you want to send it to us and get a couple bucks for it so you can trade up to a higher one, we are definitely, we want to help you out as much as we can. Um, you know, we, we just need to know the condition of the machine and, and we'll, we'll give you an offer and then uh, upgrade you to a, to a newer system. That's a great question. Uh, Loyalty is very important to us um, here, at, here at Sunstone and Orion. You know, we want you to be happy, and we want to help you out. We want to help your business succeed. We want to help you succeed. We know a lot of you are out there just uh, doing this as, you know, like, this is your love, and, and we want to be able to help you out with that and give you the greatest technology to, to help you with that and, and help you succeed. And the last question was... Uh, used. Used, yeah. We do. We have used products. Um, so... If you didn't know, we travel all over the world to demonstrate these machines. So we go to jewelry trade shows, industrial trade shows, all these things. So we have to use those machines when we demo them. So yes, when we come back, um, they are then, you know, they go through all the tests and they're certified, uh, what's that word, recertified, used, or, or whatever. So yes, we do have used machines. Give us a call. Um, they're constantly changing, so uh, we don't know the numbers. They're always changing. Uh, but if we have something used and we need to you know, help you get into that, we can definitely do that if we have it available. So. Another question. I have problems with pitting after I polish. What would I be doing wrong for this to happen? Uh, pitting. So uh, a couple things. You can try uh, using a, a little bit le lower power and a smaller wire, um, and that will help flow it in. Um, what are some other suggestions then? The power may be too, your power may be too low. Okay, so, or the opposite. Your power may be too low if you're using, like, a thicker wire or if you're putting two things together. Um, resizing a ring, for example, uh, especially with silver. You, you need to flatten your electrode, use a lot of power and uh, when you're putting those pieces together. And then, you know, you'll use wire to fill in and, and then polish, and that will help with the pitting. That's also another episode we're going to go over in the future, so... Uh, if you want more detail on that, uh, stay tuned. We'll we'll go over that with you. Is there anything you want to add to that, Bryce, about helping with the pitting? Okay. Is that everyone out there? Does that answer your questions? Are are we good? We're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put up a a little banner and we're gonna leave it on for about five or six minutes. Send in any questions that you have during those six minutes and uh, and we'll get back to you and and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us.